I just watched the four hour video with um, Eric Weinstein and Terence Howard and it went on for four hours on the Joe Rogan experience and I watched this in a way to summarize it and give you a 10 minute overview on what actually went. It was quite um, a revelation. I learned a lot and have a deep appreciation for both Terence and Eric Weinstein. Just a little bit about Eric Weinstein. He has a PhD in mathematics from Harvard University. He worked with the co-founders of PayPal to set up that massive institute, Global Institute. He's an authority. He's currently working on the Galileo project where they're investigating extraterrestrial phenomena. Um, he's also, um, I would say, a leading expert on what mathematics and physics all about. He put together a concept called the geometric unity. That was his idea about the theory of everything. So this was a really incredible discussion because um, it was like East meets West. It was like Eric was being an advisor to Terence who had brilliant ideas, but there was some incorrect notions. And the first idea was um, the, the basic message from Eric was to say, hey, Terence, you have a spark of genius, but there was um, some things that were incorrect, but there's other things that you should just focus on. So he said, forget about the one times one equals two, because to the establishment, that's a death to them. They don't want to hear that. So just drop that. He said, drop all the stuff on Walter Russell because they're not ready. The establishment have, are a closed door. And what he's trying to say is that um, you're never going to get a peer review from these elites because they own that space and they don't like heterodox people and visionaries like us who, have, who challenge their ideas. So he says, I'm here to support you because I believe you're a genius, but I'm going to give you what's called an elite review, which means I am someone of status and my words count. So I'm here to say, keep doing your work, but forget Walter Russell, forget one times one equals two, and just focus on one thing. Your gift to the world is the drone. When, when you develop this thing called the linchpin, which was omnidirectional, it was able to move in three different axes. It could speed up and stop like a UFO craft. It's the future. So if you can develop this drone, do it, you'll be fully recognized globally, but it has some fundamental errors. So I'm gonna explain where the error was. So here's the uh, Joe Rogan experience. We've got Joe Rogan, and then we've got Terence here, and this is Eric Weinstein. And they had a very cordial and polite uh, conversation. And that's why I was able to listen to it for four hours because he's saying, man, I support you, you know, you're a genius, but you've got to correct the errors. And I knew where the fundamental error was because when, um, when he had this linchpin idea, there were six pentagons, right? So there was three pentagons joined to another three pentagons, right? And I thought, and he kept talking, Terence kept talking about this 120 degree angle. And I thought, there's not a 120 degree angle. When we look at the fundamental shape of say the dodecahedron, which has um, 12 pentagons, right? They have a dihedral angle. So a dihedral angle is where two sides meet. So that angle in there is 116, 0.5 degrees. So I thought maybe he got mixed up this angle of the Pentagon. So it, so we can't talk about the 120 degrees. So maybe he was talking about the three angles, the dihedral angles of the dodeca. But he was actually talking more about that when you look at inside the tetrahedron, the fundamental structure of all atomic structure, the, the center point is not at right in the middle, it's a bit lower. So, the, so imagine here's the tetrahedron, there's the center point. And um, it has um, four faces, four vertices, but, and six edges, right? But, so basically what he was doing, he was gonna put four pentagons here and another four there, and he was gonna make this thing like an omnicopter, like a helicopter that can move in the most remarkable shapes. Now we know that the angle, the internal angle of the tetrahedral molecule, this angle inside there is 109.47, 109.5. So maybe he mistook that 120 degree angle for the internal tetrahedral angle. So, because that, that's what he was talking about, the tetrahedral um, reality. So this is probably the most important 
structure that I'm showing you to, to, because basically the advice was we have to perfect the incorrect error of the linchpin, then you'll be recognized. Yeah, so um, so then if you put four together, then if you put four together, you've got this work here. And Eric was saying that these are negative, these aren't negative spaces. And even I thought that the spaces in between, I thought that the spaces in between the four spheres that make up the tetrahedron was curved negatively, but he's saying, no, that's called a positive space. So that's what I didn't know. And then you can get more elaborate structures with spherical um, packing to get like, say 12 um, spheres meeting. And the only thing I was concerned about was that there was not one mention of the, um, Michael Evans who gave us the try on Ra. He's saying that there were six regular solids, not platonic solids, because when we allow curved spaces of the try on Ray, we end up with um, um, another shape that fits curvature. And so this is all mind exploding ideas. And so what, what Eric was saying to Terence was that nature doesn't do perfected geometry. So um, when we're, that's why the linchpin didn't work because there's a little gap, there's a little error in there. And what is his best example was saying, this icosahedron is a perfected geometry of 20 triangles in the ideal, in the divine. But when we see it in the human body, we, we, we see the T4 bacteriophage. This is a virus that exists in the body. And you can see the capsid head. It's a protein shell around the DNA. But this exists in the human body. It looks a bit like an alien. But see how the triangles are elongated? This, the, it's not a perfect icosahedron. So that's what nature does. That's what the golden ratio is about. It's not exactly 1.618, it's a near approximation. So in the material world of density, things approach the ideal. And so that was a classic example of how the icosahedron is part of our genetic makeup. And, and so I really, um, that, that, that was pretty much the conversation. It was very respectful. And the reason I personally related to Terence's, we'll call it mass delusion, in a kind way was that I've been through a similar process. So um, I was studying origami for a while. I love the way things move. And like with tech, there's eight tetrahedrons and they shape shift, right? And so when we play around with origami and toys, we get rings and patterns. And then one day an origami person, this is not my invention, someone doing the origami like that, they put, they put five cube octahedrons. This is a cube octahedron, right? And it's made up of the three, four, and six. So there's the six here. It's got squares and triangles, and there's the hexagon, but where's the five? So when this origamist said, oh my God, there's a pent tunnel here, we thought that this shape, which is the 12 around the one, this is the 12 vertex, are the 12 spheres around the one. I had a whole cosmic consciousness just about the pentagonal tunnel in the, in the cube octahedron. So then I thought I'm gonna, keep adding more of these. I'm going to take 20, there's five here, but now one day I'm going to build this, right? With 20, um, I'm going to build this with 20 of these um, cube octahedrons. So there's a cube that shape shifts into one of those. So you put 20 of these together. But as I was building it, there was a fundamental mass delusion going, I was fudging and forcing those five to fit. And if you look closely, you can see there's a big gap here. And I tried to hide the gap, but I was in complete denial. I was in illusion for years thinking I discovered a secret of the universe that the 12 around the one created the three, four, five, six, triangle, square, pent, hex. And, and then I realized, thanks to the work of another guy like Eric, another guy like Eric Weinstein was called Mark Aston in the UK. He sent me some figures and he said, Jane, when you put five of these cube octahedrons, did you notice that there's a little gap? They cannot, it's impossible. It's impossible. That's a seven degree gap. So when you've got five three dimensional cube octahedra, they, there's always a gap. So what the final conclusion was, Eric saying to Terence, you've got a little gap or a little error in your linchpin, but man, nature allows and compromises for these little gaps. Focus on this and you will be a real contributor to the ancient knowledge of the universe.